So I've worked for the last 16 years in nutrition, healing and meditation, because what's so important is that we realize that we are more than just our physical body and we need to work on all layers. And this is something that I do with people. Um, I'm running a 30 day detox program at the moment. We're on day three and it's really good. It's I think now is a really pivotal time to start detoxing because we're coming into the change of seasons. And whenever we come to a change of seasons, people get sick. It's, it's what happens all the time. It's like you go from summer to winter, coughs and colds, summer to autumn even, coughs and colds happen. You know, this happens at all the changes. And part of it is a shedding. It's a detoxification of the last season. It's like we're releasing and moving into the new. And so in that time, it's really good to strengthen our bodies. And the way we strengthen our bodies is by getting rid of the toxic overload, getting rid of the parasites, getting rid of the heavy metals, getting rid of the excess fungal overgrowths in our system, and just bringing ourselves back into alignment and balance. So I think that detoxing is something we should do on a regular basis. And, you know, I kind of, semi detox all the time. I mean, our bodies are detoxing every night when we go to sleep, hopefully depending on, but what we're doing when you do a kind of detox in itself is you're supporting your body in the natural processes that always already happen. So you're not creating something new, you're just supporting the body and releasing the things. And, you know, one of the things that's so important with this is that, you know, a lot of people say, well, I, no one used to detox ages ago you know people didn't do that 20 30 years ago why do we have to do it now why is it so important well the level of toxicity in our lives now is so much more extreme than it ever was you know the amount of pesticides herbicides wi-fi cleaning pro stuff and cleaning products you know skincare hair care all of this emotional stress boom all of that is toxic overload and our poor livers really liver really struggles to keep up with uh, this barrage that we put on it. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting, actually, because I didn't know that you were supposed to detox at this time of the year. So this has just happened and this this whole theme just seems to have come up. Maybe it's just because I'm seeing certain things and that suddenly can't come into my radar. But I've never detoxed before. I, I can't believe I've never done it. I mean, I've done a lot of spiritual detoxing, but never actual physical detoxing. So it's been absolutely amazing to start to feel what changes that can create in the body and how more sensitive you become. And um, also with the frequencies of the Healy, mm -hmm. it's amazing how much more I feel the frequencies. I know you have a Healy as well, don't you? So I do, yeah. You will and, feel that as well. And I've been running it with my group for the parasites and heavy metals and candida, I've got those programs on there. So I've been running that to support that detoxification of them, which is great. I think it's a, a really good thing to do when you're physically doing the thing. You know, I'm taking my parasite pills at the moment. I'm, I'm clearing all that out, but I'm also running the frequencies. So then you're working on it on all those different levels, which again, I think is just such an important thing. Yeah, fantastic. Really good. I just want to just quickly say a bit of quick hi to the Facebook group because I haven't actually said hi to you all yet. And just just pop your pop where you are um, coming in from and, and where you're where you're kind of like logging in from where, whereabouts you are and say hello. And if you've got any questions, please feel free to pop them in, in the chat in the Zoom because there's a few of you in here. So if you want to if you've got questions for Juliet, Please feel free to pop pop them in there and anyone in the in the live as well. Just uh, ask any questions that you want so we can, you know, get them answered for you, which is great. So, yeah. Um, can you give us a bit more info about what you're doing at the moment with your detox and your, your I, recipes? Yeah. One of the things that I think is really important is, you know, with all the stuff going on in the world at the moment, you know, our best defence for our immune system, for everything, is to make sure that we are really strong in ourselves. That's why I was called to do this detox now. I really felt the pull to uh, run a group and to, to do it now because we're living in a very strange world. Whatever side of all of this you're on, whatever your beliefs are, we're not gonna get into that, but you know, we are seeing stuff that we've never seen, experienced, you know, before in many, many different uh, varieties and ways. So for me, 
the key was really that I clear out whatever is going to block me, like block my intuition, block my um, inner warrior, block my immune system from really being as strong as it can. And one of the biggest like things that knocks us is parasites. And this isn't probably a very nice subject for many people, the, the whole parasite one, people are like, oh, God, do we have to talk about that? But approximately 70 percent of society have parasites at any one time. So three quarters of you approximately have parasites right now. That's a lot of us. And we have no other and we have no idea most of the time that we've got them. It's not like you're going to see anything necessarily. You know, kids do that sometimes when they get pinworms, they, they see little uh, white wriggly things and get an itchy bottom. But there are parasites in our system that we never know about. Someone I know uh, went on to the Fulvic Minerals and did three heavy days of it and passed a tapeworm that was like this. And they had no idea that that was inside them. So for me, it's like I, I've been pregnant and breastfeeding for a long time, so I haven't been able to do a full parasite cleanse. And that was one of the first things I did when I stopped breastfeeding. It was like I need to just make sure that I don't have anything in me because we can pick it up from the water from surfaces from if you eat meat or fish you know you can see videos of fish from like sushi riddled with parasites under a microscope so it's really important that we regularly just clear out our system and there are a few ways that we can do this so one of them is we restrict the foods that those parasites bad bacteria and fungi are going to basically refined sugars and foods that turn into sugar um, now, personally, I love fruit and I don't think that we need to um, stop eating fruit, but it's it's reducing the amount of sugars, but reducing those refined sugars and the kind of white rice, white bread, white pasta, all of those things kind of really bringing those down. And um, and that what that does is it stops feeding the parasites on one level. There are other levels that are really important to look at when it comes to parasites. It's like some parasites are there because we have high levels of heavy metal in our system. So the parasites are actually feeding on the heavy metal and they're there almost in a protection mechanism. The same works for fungal overgrowths like candida. What can happen is that the candida comes to shield our body from these heavy metals. So it's as I said, it's a protection, but you try getting rid of the candida or the parasites. If you don't get rid of the root cause, it's going to keep coming back. So that's on one level. And then we look on the deeper level. If you have parasites in your system, energetically, you have parasites in your environment because what goes on physically goes on energetically. So, um, you know, that they say that everything moves through the field. So it moves through the spiritual, the emotional, the mental and the physical. And the physical is the last manifestation of issues. So when we detox, we don't just detox physically, but we detox on all these levels. Ideally, this is what we want to be doing. And that's why exercise, yoga, meditation, these things are really important when you're detoxing because you are clearing when you release uh, toxins from the body, you're releasing kind of cellular memory as well. You're cleaning out the cells. So it can be emotional. It can be painful sometimes. So having tools in place to support that process is really key. As I said, like yoga, like meditation, like dancing, singing, you know, all of these things can be really helpful. The Healy, because again, you can send those frequencies to help you clear uh, the cells at that deeper level. Um, so something like the pure one would be a really good one to do or the gold, you know, or the deep cleanse. All of those are going to be great cycles that you could run uh, with the Healy to kind of um, amplify and support the process. Uh, so I think it's really good to, to listen and honour your body. So with the group I'm doing, it's uh, I, I supply 30 days of recipes and it's kind of gradual process so the first week um, is plant-based no refined foods no refined sugars um, eating having more smoothies having more raw food but it's kind of a general gentle introduction because for some people that's a big shift depending on where you are with what you eat um, some people eat lots of meat eating refined sugar and all of that stuff so it's that's the first week and then the second week we move into a higher amount of raw food and a higher amount of liquid um, so you're having more smoothies and you're reducing those meals and those meals that you are eating are just fruit and vegetables without any grains uh, anything like that and then the third week we move into just liquids 
but what's so so exciting about that is that you can have uh, soups uh, like raw soups that are totally raw but hot um, and filled with nutrients but it feels like you're eating a meal because you're having a soup but actually it's just like a smoothie but a savory version so you're taking the strain off your digestive system and then the fourth week we ease back into um, kind of that normal not normal eating but the, like the first week so plant-based no refined foods so you've got a space of time where you can start to reset your taste buds and reset your your brain and your kind of addiction to things like cheese and sugar because these actually are addictive uh, it's like cheese releases opioids in your brain when you consume it so um, it's actually like a drug and that's why so many people always say oh yeah I can I can do that but I can't ever give up cheese you know with a with a plant-based diet I mean I did that for years I said I yeah I well I, I I'm mainly I'm mainly vegan but you know I have to have cheese because I just I'm part Italian that was always my my excuse and when I stopped it, I felt a thousand times better. My brain just felt better. My stomach felt better. And I knew all along I'd been intolerant to dairy, but I couldn't give it up because I was addicted. So it was that just, hang on, now I've just got to make this choice and go for it. And the, the repercussions on my body were so amazing. And I, by accident, had a, a bite uh, a while ago, this pizza that said it. I thought it was vegan. It wasn't. And I ate it and I was like, wow, that tastes good. And then within about 10 minutes, I was like, oh, my God, I feel really sick. That was vegan, wasn't it? And I looked at the thing and it, I saw it wasn't. <laughs> my head hurt. I felt tired. And I thought that's amazing. Like you said, Abby, you know, when you detox, you clear out and you can really feel the effects of what food's doing to you. And this is something that's so important when we when we do detox, it's part of the reason that it's good to do it is you reprogram your body um, to really be aware and fine tune what you're eating, because otherwise what happens is we get this kind of uh, comfortably numb state where we don't realize that we're feeling rubbish because that's our norm. Mm. And we don't realize the effects certain foods are having. I remember my first cleanse was back eh, 15 years ago and my oldest boy was one and uh, I did a five day juice fast and I was just having one litre of carrot and apple juice a day and the rest was just water. So it was quite intense for a first time fasting. And uh, I didn't drink a lot of coffee at the time. I had a cup of coffee in the morning. That was my kind of thing. I had just one cup of coffee and I really liked that cup of coffee. And so I did this detox and felt great, felt really amazing. Anyway, the first day coming off it, I did the worst thing ever. I, we, I was walking with a friend with our kids in the push chairs. We went past this cafe and they had these lovely looking brownies and the smell of coffee. And I was like, oh, that looks good. So we went and had a coffee and a chocolate brownie. That's how I broke my fast. <laughs> Oh, that was intense. The headache I got and the feeling of sick and the jitteriness from the caffeine was unbelievable. And I thought, my God, this has always been creating this state, but I've just numbed myself to know that. And I um, haven't much caffeine. Yeah, since. I can totally relate to that because like I've this is my first detox. And for anyone that doesn't ever detox, and that was me like about five days ago I used to watch everyone detoxing and I'd be like well you know I don't really I don't need to detox I'm you know because I'm I'm quite I do a lot of spiritual things so I always kind of use that as my kind of barrier I'm like well I'm good I'm good um and you know I do my intermittent fasting sometimes I don't eat all the time and I've got much better over the years um you know and I, I don't have as many cravings as I used to but to actually do that physical detox and then have those cravings afterwards and I did a really crazy mistake I ended up eating um red meat on the first day of my detox <laughs> it was like the most stupid idea it before bed and I literally I I suffered I suffered the first night I couldn't I had such a bad stomach pain because my body was like what is this you've just cleaned yourself out on the first day and now I've got to deal with this. I was like, wow, my body really doesn't like this. And I knew it anyway. So, yeah, I can really relate to that completely, that, um, that we definitely numb ourselves to these feelings that come in. And, and, and yeah, um, it's just amazing. And, and, and I think a lot of people here, I don't know if you've got any questions coming in. I just haven't checked yet. 
Um, uh, I'm just looking. Other than the toxin program, which ones can be used for heavy metals and parasites? Um, I have been feeling nauseous. Um, so yeah, there's a question from Joy there that's come in about that. Like, um, that's one of the questions really that I have as well is that like, there's so many different things you can do out there. Where do you even begin? Yes, yeah, so um, with the clearing out the toxins, one of the keys is just adding in green vegetables. You know, one of the, the, the things to do is if you wanna detoxify your body, you need to think about what foods, what toxins, first of all, are you putting into your body? That's really important to sit down and kind of make a list. Like what is toxic in your life? Because if you're just trying to detox what's already there, but you're not getting rid of what's coming in, then you're almost just leveling yourself out and not ever actually making dents in where you're at. So, so I think this is a really good first step is writing down a list. Okay. What is it that's toxic? So, you know, what skincare are you using? What hair care are you using? What cleaning products are you using? You know, are you getting organic food? Uh, do you drink tap water? Um, these are a few of the things that you can start to think about. You know, what are your relationships like? What's your relationship to money like? What's your relationship to yourself like? A big part of the toxic issues in our lives is our is our own kind of lack of self-love so when you don't love yourself then you're never going to really treat yourself properly you're never going to really want to do these things fully because you know detoxing is an act of self-love um so nutrition is an act of self-love the food that we eat is an act of self-love or not or an act of abuse because if you constantly eat food that you know is bad for you, that is abuse. So, you know, it's it's about working in this relationship. And we're programmed from a very young age into this abusive relationship with ourselves. Because it's like, you know, I, I see in, in the kids in school, my children don't go to school now, but my middle son, they used to get rewarded with Haribos. Now he never ate them because he's a vegetarian, but it's like, how is a Haribo a reward? It's actually toxic. So from a young age, we're programming children to think that a reward is something, you know, this sweet treat is a reward, but actually it's not a reward. We're damaging our body when we have it. Now that doesn't mean you can't eat lovely sweet things. I um, wrote a book called Divine Desserts, How to Have Your Cake and Eat It. And it's all gluten-free, um, uh plant-based refined sugar-free delicious recipes uh, just trying to find a few of the pictures that are all oh look at that one that's a really nice oh wow this one <laughs> so it's all stuff with you is it it's like we can have lovely treats because we all want a nice treat don't we you know we all well most of us love chocolate i love chocolate but I don't want chocolate that's filled with dairy and refined sugar. So I make my own. Mm. And it's about just switching over our brain into that thought that what we want is to thrive. So we need to put in the food into us and the thoughts into us that will help us with that process of thriving. So when we look at detoxing and what what kind of things we can use to get rid of heavy metals and parasites first of all as i said it's making this list and then it's going okay so there are some key things that are really good so um this stuff here i absolutely love fulvic care it's um uh it's it's fulvic mineral powder and you add it to water and basically you get mud it's mud water doesn't taste like mud it's fine and you can bathe in it it's incredible for detoxing gently on your system well it, it, how gently it is depends on the volume you take of it and uh jacintha uh, sells this so if anyone's interested you can uh, get in touch with her and she can put you in touch you know hook you up with it you can bathe with it and what's incredible is you you put that stuff in the bath it pulls toxins and parasites out and you can see parasites in the bath afterwards sometimes i've witnessed it it's like freaky it's really freaky but what's amazing is it's pulling it out through your skin so that's one of the things that i think is really good there's another thing called zeotrex which is a great heavy metal detoxifier and that's on my website 
and it's made with zeolite, coriander, um, and other heavy metal detoxifiers. So you can start working with that to cleanse these heavy metals from your system. And again, that's quite a gentle one, so it's not too harsh. Um, little advisory, if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, you shouldn't have the zeolite. You can have the fulvic minerals, um, but you would want to have something like just coriander. Fresh coriander is a really gentle detoxifier that you can have if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. Um, but the zeolite, I give that to my um, middle son who's nine um, because he, we, I found out he had quite high levels of heavy metal in his system. So we've been detoxifying that. Um, and then the parasites, uh, there are different ways to detox parasites. As I said, the first thing is making your environment within your body hostile so they don't want to be there. So cutting down on these refined foods, refined sugars um, and creating more of an alkaline state in your body. So uh, the more alkaline you are, the more your body is oxygenated, the more the parasites are like, oh, this is horrible in here. And they don't, they don't, they don't latch on. If you're really acidic and sugary in your body and you've got lots of stress and anger and the rest of it, that's like the perfect breeding ground for them to go, yes. Um, so uh, there's a great product that I take, which I'm taking at the moment called Paratrex, which is um, pills that you take and you take two 20 minutes before breakfast and two 20 minutes before lunch. And you do that for 40 days. And that's made with black walnut, hull, clove, um, neem. Uh, what else has it got in it? Let me just see. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, what else does it have? So all of these things in here are key things that will detox parasites. So black walnut hull, um, diatomaceous earth, neem, wormwood, um, and cloves. So uh, that's my favorite one. Again, that is on my website, Paratrex it's called. Um, mm. You can also get liquid uh, parasite cleanse if you prefer liquid. So you can just put the drops in water. The drops don't taste so nice. So I prefer the pills because you can't taste it. So it's just like, yeah, done. Um, so that for me is an easier way to do it than having some really rank uh, liquid that's like. Um, <laughs> that's funny. That's exactly what I've been going through for the last five days. <laughs> Are you doing a liquid parasite cleanse? I'm doing, uh, have you heard of Quenda? No. P-E-N-D-A. It's uh, organic herbs. It originate, originally comes from Australia, actually. Okay. There's one distributor in the UK and EU. His name is James. He completely healed himself from um, an immune issue that he had, um, a nerve issue as well. Like, it's quite, it's quite amazing. It's got, like, a massive list of herbs, some of them which are in the same as Paratrex. Some of them have those wormwood and, well, the list is, is huge. It doesn't taste very nice. But, oh, my God, I feel amazing. I mean, actually, I think the more toxic you are, the worse it tastes, they say. Okay. The first, first day was horrendous. Yeah. I, I was like, there's no way I can do this for a month. No way. But second day, I managed it. And I'm now doing the full amount that I'm supposed to be doing. Um, it's not pleasant, but it is absolutely making me feel great. And um, I just feel everything about me, um, everything about my day is just fantastic. I feel so full of power. It's great. So yeah, and um, but yeah, so the the I'm interested to know actually, um, because I know Jacintha, you have got also some um you you told me a little bit today about this product where you put your feet into it. Do you want to share a little bit about your yeah, sure. detoxing? Yeah, I actually think the the thing that's most fascinating me at the moment is that I bought this product, Spirit guided me there. So I was like, okay, I'll buy it. And then the first message I got was, do not start drinking this because if you start drinking this, you're just going to start hemorrhaging. And I was like, oh, okay. So it's quite powerful then. So I was guided to just spend the first two weeks with my feet in a foot bath and within about a day I started to get like a couple of like black marks on my feet so areas where something was obviously trying to push its way out so that was really really interesting to watch I observed something that wasn't particularly nice but I'm not really a lot of people are like really interested in what it is but I always feel that the more attention you place on whatever it is that's coming out the more you create 
more of that sort of thing so I'm just like okay that's going down the loo that's going down the sink I'm not interested so my kids watched me do this and I have 12 10 and 8 and I was just doing it for me I, you know I wasn't even thinking about them and then they were like can I have one can I have one and I was like oh okay this is interesting because obviously they've seen me do loads of stuff and they were never interested and in particular, my middle child has been really fascinated by it. So she's had a couple of foot baths. And the other day she turned around and she said, uh, mommy, can you imagine bathing in it? Now, of course, she hasn't been on the forums and seen that. Yes, that's in fact one of the things you can do. So I was like, oh, OK, why don't you do that if you'd like it? She was like, oh, yes. <laughs> so she bathed in it and um, that was first thing in the morning. And then five o'clock that afternoon, she just came charging through the house. Somebody here is using their intuition. I can hear it. And I was like, <laughs> what? what you, well, yeah, I was literally tuning in. She was like, I can hear it in my ears. It's like somebody rang a bell and then it's ringing afterwards. And I was like, okay, what's this? And um the way she described it made me think it sounded a bit like tinnitus and she's never particularly suffered with that but she has suffered with her ears in the past so I was like I tell you what why don't we tomorrow when you do your bath just put your head like to here and put your ears under the water because that time she just rubbed a bit behind her ears and so she did that the next day and she was absolutely fine doesn't hear any ringing or anything anymore and I was just like wow and she still asks me like she'll walk into the bath and she'll go mommy there is something very wrong with your bath and I'm like what she's like there's no boo in it <laughs> <laughs> so it's just fascinated because you know I haven't created this she's just seen me use it and my eldest has been drinking it she the only way she can tolerate drinking it is with a bit of Ribena which is not ideal but you know what if that's how it goes in she's very very happy to take it um and she had had a nasty instant been playing in a river and got really really sick after that so I'm really pleased that the boo was coming there at that time so she quickly did it and in fact my youngest I've literally just put her to bed and what did she want before bed a boo bath please <laughs> she was in it as well I'm just fascinated that they're all so drawn to it of their own accord like they know exactly what they need much more than we do my goodness I had to have like these big flashing lights like have you seen it yet just in turn I'm like oh yeah okay I'll buy it <laughs> nice so um I'm just like I think because everyone is because everyone here is in the Healy group I would love to just kind of see how we can also talk about frequencies um because I think that's really important because all of us have got these Healy's um, you know, doing the physical detox is amazing, like we've just been talking about, like how we can create, become more sensitive to the frequencies. But like for everyone here, um, what com do you have any advice, um, either, either Jacintha or um, Juliet, about how you use the, how you use the Healy um, for, for the detox? Or have you got any creative ways or, or, or ways you can support yourself with that? I know you've already explained that you would use the pure the pure program um, and maybe the deep cleanse and a few of the um you know you've got some of the therapist programs for parasites and other things like that um what's your experience with those for example um or do you have any other tips yes yeah, so i love those uh three that i got the three the the parasite heavy metals and candida one i've been using those on my clients for a while now to support it and really seeing good results so I think they're definitely worth it if you if your stomach gets bloated a lot and if you feel sluggish and heavy then you're likely to have parasites or candida to be honest those are kind of some of the symptoms so I would recommend that you look into getting those because they're going to be really helpful in supporting you through that so um, I've also my my middle son I've been running the parasite one on him as I feel he's had a lot of mental health issues and I feel that it's linked to parasites mm. so I've been running those on him and he's been having the boo bath once a week and um, that's been really helpful doing those two things together because as I said before it's like doing doing these things physically and energetically is so important so that you're getting both sides of it the other thing that you can run is the nutrition program 
Um, so the nutrition program obviously is going to pull up any intolerances and send you those frequencies, not intolerances, um, in, in deficiencies. So it's going to show up um, what's going on and it's going to send those frequencies to rebalance your body out. So whilst you're detoxing, adding that in is going to be really helpful to just um, resync yourself because that's what it's about. Ultimately, it's like we are vibration. That's what we are. And we have these vibrational strands within our body. And what happens is those vibrational strands get out of line. And that's what disease is. So it's these vibrational strands that have moved out of where they should be. So food, crystals, sound, healies, all of these are just forms of vibration to realign us, to re-put us into that space that we're meant to be in. Because ultimately everything on this planet is vibrational. And when we can start to really grasp that, um, then, you know, we can instantly heal from things if we choose to, because it's all just vibration. And that's a really powerful thing to start getting our heads around. You know, I worked as a healer for years and one of the most profound experiences was with my son. Uh, when I did my Reiki and Sekem master um, teacher training, my oldest was six months old. So he was on me as I was being attuned. So he was attuned at the same time, really. And uh, when he was two and a half, my dad was quite ill. And he would just go over and put his hands on him. And one time he just went over and he put his hands on him. And then he went, you're all better now. And I was like, no, no, do it a bit longer because it, he can't be better now. And he said, no, he is. That's all he needs. And it was a really interesting thing because in my conception, my father had all these different ailments, which would take a long time to heal because they'd taken a long time to get there. But in this little two and a half year old's perception, energy can heal instantly. And it can, it's our minds that block that instantaneous healing. So it's the same with the healing. You can send those frequencies. And if we're open and receptive enough, we can have instant transformation. Now we don't always, and that's okay. And that's not saying that we're doing anything wrong. It's just our state of mind and where we're at. And that's great. You know, that's, that's, I'm not kind of belittling anyone who doesn't get instantaneous healing, but it's just this concept to get our heads around to realize that if everything is en energy and everything is vibration, everything can shift in a moment. So for me, when we detox, we're clearing out so that we can hear and see and feel and intuit so much deeper so that this then becomes more of our state of being, that we can understand this concept. We can feel it so much more than we can just like, oh, yes, well, if everything's energy, then this should be, you know, that's very kind of, um, you know, you can think it and understand it. But then when you detox and cleanse, you can really feel that on such a deeper level. And that's why, Abby, you said you feel that the frequencies are so much more potent as you're detoxing because you're getting rid of the blocks. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, I started with the colon cleanse and that was like quite incredible because I actually felt like I not only got rid of the blocks inside of me um, in terms of like, um, you know, the, my colon got cleansed from all, all the rubbish that's in there that stayed in there for ages but also from like also emotional blocks and also money blocks I realized wow I feel so much lighter I feel like I can I had like a dream that I um I had a crazy money dream and I was like well, that I received three checks and I was like wow and, it, and I actually felt the feeling of what it was like to receive this amount of money but also it was like in three amounts it was like a small amount a medium amount and a large amount and for each amount I had to figure out what I, what for each amount what I would what I would sacrifice and what are the most important things so for the first amount was you know what are the real important things that I could that I could use that money for to, to be able to do what I want to do in the world and to be able to um, you know fulfill my my goal and my my um my ultimate yeah my ultimate um purpose really you know which is I've got like quite big ambitions and I'd love and it's all about to help um everybody really and, and help us all to not just help but just to, to come on support many people and 
just you know bring everyone on a journey which would be really nice or just go on a journey with everybody where we're actually able to heal to heal each other in whatever ways we want you know and it's a lot to do with frequency like you said so and then obviously that the second amount was a bit more so it was like okay what could I do for that and then the large amount again was like what would I do with that amount and it was like it really put me in that mind frame and I've never had a dream like that in my life but that's that's the first dream I had after the first cleanse so it was like wow what is actually inside of us and what's possible and the blocks that we have in there um in all on all levels I mean, I read also that you kind of, it has like a memory. So you, anything that might have happened in childhood, you kind of store that memory in the colon in, in all that stuff that gets stuck. And that is also being um, cleansed out of you. So almost like you can release all of that through that colon cleanse. So yeah, I really recommend it for anyone who's never done it. Um, it's absolutely like mind blowing um, what's possible when you start to see the, the changes within you. So yeah, that's really good. And um, I think another another subject which I find really, really interesting Abby, is just about before, yeah, just before sure. you go on, go on, go on, I just wanted to say that working with clients with the Healy, so much detoxification is happening already. And I think it's important that everybody realizes that in everything that you're running, you're already detoxifying. So every time you're sending a frequency to you you're already detoxifying your body. So you don't necessarily need to go out and, and search for or add more to your healing. You can very much do it with what you've got. I think it's important that people understand that because when I work with clients, I'm quite often mud packing them, which is like the energy of bentonite clay because I have to stop working because they've gone into such a strong detoxification that I need to energetically remove what they're detoxing. So I think it's really important that we understand that everything we're doing is also detoxifying us when we're running the Healy because as soon as we cause those cells to vibrate it's like going into an infrared sauna isn't it as soon as those cells start to vibrate they start to detox and that's what frequency does it causes our cells to vibrate so we're we're just by pressing vibrate we're, we're detoxifying as well and uh, just one quick story of somebody who is a client who has started passing the most obscene amount of worms out of her body and she's not done anything other than run the Healy so you know it is totally it's all it's all there in the package already very amazing. interesting amazing yeah and um it's actually kind of like touching on what I was going to say it was about well in a way it was like how you say it's detoxing everything is about the people around us I think this uh, toxic people I think also Juliet at the beginning you said that you look, you write a list of all the things that are toxic for you and come into that lack of self-love. And that lack of self-love also is like allowing these people around you to, you know, emotionally, um, you know, affect you, abuse, a lot of emotional abuse, a lot of, you know, physical abuse that is happening that a lot of people don't talk about. And that's also a form of self-love um, of not loving yourself, allowing those kind of people around you to do that. Um, so I just wanted to kind of go on that view of toxic and um, toxicity um, in a way. And just wondering if you have any like advice on that or. Well, one all. of the things I wanted to say first was that what you were talking about, your dreams with the colon cleanse. Yeah. And this links into the self-love as well, is that our energetically we have chakras. So our sacral chakra is the one that's around the area of our um, uh, colon because all of the chakras relate to organs as well. So the, the sacral is all about our relationship basically to money, food and sex. That's kind of like what it boils down to. Um, so it's about our abundance. It's about how we view ourselves. Um, it's about our self-worth. It's about our self-love. It's about our relationship to food. Um, so it, it kind of encompasses all of that. So when you cleanse out your colon, you're also releasing some of the baggage and the blocks of your sacral chakra. So you are tapping into your abundance, your creativity, your self-worth, all of those things. And you're redefining your relationship with food. So you're redefining money, food and sex, basically, by clearing out physically that uh, that energy center and also if you work with the chakra program on the Healy then the sacral is all about that as well it's about clearing out those issues so uh, that would be a good one to run 
uh, alongside uh, any kind of cleanse to, to clear out those issues. And if you've got money blocks and abundance blocks, then the sacral is sacral and the solar plexus are kind of the areas to look because self the solar plexus is about your joy. And that's very much linked to how we feel about ourselves. So those two are kind of intrinsically linked um, into that. So, you know, running those chakra ones is really, really good energetically to, to kind of realign you um, with these feelings. But, you know, as you were saying, our, our self-love, our self-worth is so important. And, you know, clearing out those toxic relationships is key. One of my favorite things is Ho'oponopono. Um, now, this is, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. It's a Hawaiian blessing, and it's one of the most powerful things to transform your, your self-love, I found. Um, saying that to yourself every day in the mirror, it can be really, you know, it can be really hard when you look at yourself and you go, I'm sorry, I love you, thank you, please forgive me. And you, you just really connect into that deep forgiveness for all of the abuse, all of the trauma, all of the hurt, all of those things that you've done to yourself unknowingly most of the time, to all the times you've caved in on your boundaries, um, you know, all of those, those different issues. And when you can really tell yourself that you love you, you and that you're sorry, it's, it really can transform your life. And I've seen it so many times, I've witnessed it really having such a positive effect. And again, with traumatic relationships, um, you can do this, you can, you don't even have to have the person there, you can just say it to them in your mind and it can really help to break through. Um, and I, I, that for me is one of my favorite techniques for uh, reactivating that self-love because you're telling yourself you love you. And, you know, we don't do that very often, do we? No, we definitely don't. We don't. I love that. I love that sentence that you said. What did you say it was called? Ho'oponopono. Ho'oponopono. It's a Hawaiian it's blessing. so beautiful. Yeah. Juliet, do you know the, the story behind it? Can you share with us the story? Yeah, because that's there's... my favourite bit. It is, it is incredible. There was a, um, a Hawaiian doctor and a mental hospital and this there was a lot of trouble in the hospital and this doctor got all of the files of the patients in the hospital and without them knowing he said every day repeatedly ho'oponopono to each of them and it transformed the mental health um uh, hospital it, it, it just literally these people who were so troubled just weren't anymore so and they didn't know anything about it which is just, I think, the most powerful thing. But they had no idea, and yet they were transformed by this man who didn't know them, saying it to their pictures and their files. I mean, it just, it makes me want to cry just thinking about the power that, that our intentions can have. And I think, actually, this is a really important thing with detoxing with any of it, is like your intention is the most powerful thing. It's like with the Healy, what is your intention for anything you do? If you're gonna detox, whatever you do, set that intention first. So you're really clear why you're doing something. So when you run the Healy, what is your intention? And I know it says, what's the greatest thing you resonate with, but really get clear, I'm running this because, and I always add in for my highest good and the highest good of all around me. Cause I really like that kind of, caveat in there so that if what my intention is isn't for the highest good then like override it so it is the highest good of everyone um because you know my mind my ego might think something's for the highest good and actually it's not and that's another thing like i i've been saying a lot recently is that everything that's happening in this moment is perfect just the way it is it may be crap it may be hard but actually it's just what i need and I'm in exactly the place I need to be for the lessons that I need to have. And I've gone through quite a lot of trauma and stress in my life over the last three or four months with one of my children. And it's been like so hard and it's been the most challenging thing I have probably ever faced. And, you know, at first I was like, why is this happening to me? I can't cope, why me? You know, all that kind of poor me thing. And then I just started realizing everything is happening for a reason and I'm in exactly the right place and I have exactly the right tools to cope and get through this. So I can do this and I can get through this and we all can. And what I realized was that 
all our challenges are initiations. They're just taking us to that next level of our evolution. And you can't evolve without going through shit, you know? We have to shed, we have to let go, and we have to tap into that strength. And sometimes we don't know what our strength is until we're pushed to it. So, you know, that's that's something that I think is so important to remember. And that's where Ho'oponopono comes because you can forgive yourself for not being perfect and not getting it right all the time because we don't, but know that you're doing the best you can and you're, you're exactly where you should be and you have those tools. Amazing. I, I absolutely love that. And it gives, I think it takes away that pressure, doesn't it, as well, to, to perform because a lot of us are always trying to, to be the way, you know, we need to think that we should be, you know, the way we think we need to be like, oh, we should be doing that and we should be doing this and we need to be successful and all that society that all that stuff they put on us. We feel like we have to be the certain way and actually letting go of all of that and just being how we are and being imperfect. I think it's a really great lesson. It's a mm. great way to grow, definitely. I've been doing a lot of work with wild women stuff um, over the last year and a half and tapping into my wild women and teaching people about that. And I think that really taught me about this need that we're not perfect and that I don't have to be superwoman and none of us have to be, you know, we don't have to have be the perfect mother, the perfect wife, the perfect business person, keep a perfect house, any of that stuff. It's all a load of rubbish, you know, and really when we tap into the depths of who we are we're so much more than any of that superficial stuff you know and for me it, I'm very much an earth-based person so connecting into the earth connecting into that energy of the earth grounding and uh, and that is the most important thing because then the truth of who you are comes through you anyway and the more you resonate in that truth frequency, the more you vibrate and pull those people into you that are on the same page as you. Amazing. Just, it just feels so right, doesn't it, to bring that element in now, the earth element, mm. um, especially in this chat right now, because we've gone through all the different la layers and the earth element is definitely important, isn't it, for detoxing? Yeah. And, and yeah, I, and obviously the water as well. And I think one of the things that, you know, when you're detoxing, well, just for life, is just going and sitting on the earth. You know, if you're struggling, if you're having a hard time, if you want to cleanse, if you want to clear, if you want to get rid of the EMFs, any of this stuff, you know, Wi-Fi is one of the biggest things that we have to detoxify from in our environment, in our lives. And it has such a huge impact on our being. And when we sit on the earth and we ground, we can release that buildup of electromagnetic frequency in our system. And that's why you can buy like grounding sheets for your computers, grounding sheets for your beds. You know, you can get crystals, you can put um, magnetic insoles in your shoes. I don't know, do Healy run a grounding program? Oh, I don't know actually. Does anybody know? <laughs> that would be that would be super cool, actually. I'm sure there must be one for grounding. I think I'm quite sure I've seen something on Breach Hanlon's um, therapist programs about grounding. I'm sure she's got so many. Um, but I, it's something that's worth looking into. I don't know if anyone knows that. I mean, I think there's the root chakra, isn't it? The root chakra we can do in the chakra programs. But it's just that really kind of, it's almost beyond the root chakra. It's almost that really deep grounding and clearing off of the EMF stuff. So like some kind of EMF protection program and, and deep grounding. I'm sure there must be one, but it's worth looking into. I'm going to, because actually I, I, I'd really like to run that one for me. Yeah, yeah, I think it would be really good. Someone has just written in the Facebook Live, Catherine has said that we can buy one in the School of Frequencies. So... Nice. That's um, going to be a purchase very soon for me then. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, I've also been looking at the therapist programs this week and I'm going to, I'm going to start um, exploring those as well because I haven't done it yet. Um, um, I've I been, know, you know, telling everyone about it, but I haven't actually done it. <laughs> I know there's an abundance one, uh, which looks great. I was thinking of getting the abundance one. And now if there's a grounding one, then that would be really good. I mean, obviously we can use physical tools as well, um, you know, like crystals to help you ground and things like that. And just getting out on the earth, 
is is such a an important aspect i really really can't um stress it enough especially with you know the rollout of 5g and these kind of things the more we have tools in place to protect ourselves from how this is going to affect us on a deep cellular level the, the better i think this is you know really really key um i just recently bought all of us like a little snooty thing with that's lined with silver to protect the thyroid from emfs um oh, and wow. it's been so helpful i've got actually where is it uh Oh, can't see it. There's, uh, so I got, yeah, all of my kids, my oldest son, who's 16, he's like, I'm not wearing that out. I was like, okay, but just wear it in the house. And and I've been wearing it on my head, like a kind of bandana -y thing. And that's been really nice. And my husband, when I first got it, he was like, oh my God, what have you bought now? And <laughs> I said, no, it's really good, honestly. And he tried it on and he's like, and now he doesn't take it off, which is so interesting. He's like, actually, this feels really good. So, you know, combining that with some kind of Healy frequency to protect ourselves from the EMFs and, you know, Shungite is a great crystal to protect us from EMFs. You know, there's lots of other things that we can use. But, you know, I think I think that's a really important thing to detox from and turning off your phone and your Wi-Fi like at nine o'clock. Well, not always nine o'clock unless I'm working, but generally at nine o'clock, our Wi-Fi goes off. Uh, phones go on to airplane mode and that's it it's like there's no more electrical stimulus coming into this house from nine o'clock wow amazing amazing are you living in a in a secluded place or do you have many people around we've got one neighbor we've just moved about three months ago and where we were before we had loads of wi-fi signals now there's just one that comes into this house other than ours so 